Hey, this is Devin Feehan, and I'm up next on Quad Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the voice of the ATV Racing Nation, quadradio.net. I'm Rodney Tomlin. This is Devin Feehan. Of course, this is Quad Radio Prodigies as we get set to roll into uh, a great season of GNCC here in 2019. And welcome uh, to Quad Radio, uh, Devin. I know, uh, uh, dude, you've been uh, uh, working your way up through the ranks for quite some time now, and you've certainly made some names for yourself. Uh, rookie last year and uh i think uh i'm not mistaken weren't you top rookie as well like rookie of the year whatever you call if you want to go go that route or something like that i don't know (laughs) where i i think you were top finishing rookie if i'm not mistaken Mm -hmm. if you weren't you were certainly very close but uh great thing is uh you're back here you're in your sophomore season of xc1 class racing and let's talk a little bit uh about uh gncc uh first and foremost i guess uh, we should say how's things going man Uh, Yeah, no, things are going good. Uh, Like you said, you know, we've just been, you know, taking these past few years to just keep making strides in GNCC racing. And, you know, I've just been doing the best I can with it and having a blast along the way. So, yeah, it's been good. Well, tell me a little bit about along the way. Uh, Where did it all begin for you as far as GNCC is concerned? Uh, So I started off at a local series in New York, you know, of Winoa. So um, I started up there back in 2013 and, you know, started dead last row and just you know, all I cared about was being there and competing. So, you know, eventually one thing led to the other, and then we started with GNCC. And that's now, were just... you a youth racer at that time, or were you uh, on a 450? No, I started on a 300EX, which is kind of in the middle middle of both. So I never had the youth, you know, part of my career, but I kind of just started, you know, right, right there in the middle. Right there in the middle. And, and it seems to have worked out well for you. And you didn't have any racing experience leading up to that, huh? No, not at all. Like, you know, my whole family, we've never really had anyone into racing. And, you know, it just kind of caught my eye. And, you know, we used to ride four wheelers back home. And, you know, my buddies had race machines. And that's just kind of what got me hooked. So one thing led to the other. So the, so the buddies, you're, it was the buddy system. I mean, you're just out trail riding. And you got a buddy that pulls up. He's got this slick trick looking machine. He's got cool graphics on. He's got suspension. And mm-hmm. it sounds a little bit different than yours, huh? Oh, yeah. That's what it was all about. <laughs> the sound of it. <laughs> it, it kind of attracted you. So, uh, what got what got you to? I mean, how did you finally make your way to your first race? I realized that your buddies got you interested in it. They were racing one no, I would assume at that particular time. Actually, none of us were racing. They were really just riding, and um, you know, we all knew of racing. And um, I finally talked my dad into racing a winter series race. My argument was, since we were in the snow, it'd be safer. And, you know, if I wrecked, it would be two foot of powder to the left or right of me. So that's kind of how it worked. So it worked out for you anyway, right? Right. And so then, did you race in two feet of snow and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. I did a lot of winter racing. And so I, just, that, that's I'm not familiar with that. Is that I, I kind of heard that once before. And you hear people talk about winter racing, but I never really know. any. Tell me a little bit about that. What's that like? I imagine in New York, it's probably a pretty grueling and demanding time of the year to race not just because of temperatures but obviously because of conditions i'm sure it's not easy to ride a four-wheeler in 11 or a foot of snow or two feet of snow or whatever it is you're riding in yeah for sure i mean it's it's just low temperatures and studded tires i mean you probably know broom tayoga raceway oh yeah that's where it was all held and we had nine races throughout the winter and that's just kind of kind of how we did it so did you ever do any ice racing or wasn't ice racing on a pond or anything but it was just it was just like cross country racing in right. the snow i didn't know if maybe you dabbled in that or not that that's something i was exposed to indoors one time and i thought that was pretty neat so uh you did it and tell me what was the general reception of that with your parents what they think about that um you know they just saw how much i enjoyed it and you know you know the the passion i had for it so um you know, they just really saw me working hard at it and, want, you know, wanted to help me along the way. And, you know, they've learned, to, they've came to love it and, you know, really do it with me and be a big part of it. And the thing is, uh, I mean, you go from there and then you go in. How did you talk them? OK, I did this in the snow. How did you talk them into the spring or summer series when there wasn't any snow and there was no soft powder to fall on? Right. Well, once we got roped into the race community at the winter series, you know, they were all racing during the summer. So it was kind of just 
you know, hand in hand. We got a race here, we got a race there with them. So and we just kept going next level with you it. You kind of built camaraderie and friendships. Right. And it just felt natural to yep. make that progression, huh? So mm -hmm. how was your first year out you out of uh, uh, racing? Were you pretty competitive then? Uh, it started off, I really had no idea what I was in for. And, uh, you know, towards the end of the year, I didn't even realize I was up there in the points, but I ended up second. And I was like, you know, maybe I could do something with this. And then, you know, the next year came around, I started to put more into it and it just kind of kept, kept moving forward with it. Let's talk, uh, how did you get to GNCC? Same thing there. I mean, we were at Winoa, just a little bit bigger series. And, um, you know, we knew there was a few, we went and hit one down. I think we came to Big Buck one year and you know, did that, just really was exposed to what GNCC was and, um, you know, just fell in love with it. And then I think the next year we just went, went all out and just did the whole series. Wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. And, I mean, because for you, you're a very uh, talented kid. Uh, there's more to your life than um, racing. Mm -hmm. uh, you're um, – obviously, you're book smart, right? I mean, there, you, you do pretty good. You did pretty you good. You could say school. that. Uh, are you still in school? Or are you out of school now? Yeah, I'm in school right now. I'm actually doing uh, part time in a community college, so I'm still going with so, it. So, really, a, a good uh, student. Um, but you were talented in other aspects of your life. Talk a little bit about things outside of racing. I know musically, you're a very musically talented. Were, are you uh, talented in other sports? Were you a stick and ball type of guy? Um, you know, I think before racing, my thing was uh, drumming. I was in a band actually with my brother and a few friends it was just really for fun but you know i i think i had mm -hmm. i had some mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> i had some talent there but i didn't have you know the passion for it near what i have for this so. i mean i think that's pretty neat that you that you like to play music and stuff what is classical music obviously is what you like what what songs do you like to play whenever you sit down to the piano yeah there's one uh rondo a la turca by mozart and uh, i think the other one's by beethoven maybe for elise i think it's called Really? Yeah. I, you know, I studied in college. I actually studied uh, classical music, and I didn't realize how interesting classical music was and, and, and what the feeling that you got I, just listening to it. I can only imagine what it's like to play. I mean, that has to be a great stress relief for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's cool to play. I think, you know, my favorite part is, you know, starting something from scratch and not knowing at all how to do it and just, you know, being in that process of learning and just, you know, proving it proving it to myself i could do it that's that's what i that's how i get my enjoyment out of it honestly and, and, and it is a break away from everything because i mean it's different than any and everything else you mm -hmm. do in life right yeah absolutely i mean with with racing you know i'm i'm wrenching on the bikes and i'm working out and you know just riding and everything just circles back to racing so i mean it's it's nice to have something that's not so involved with it you know yeah, that I, and, and that's one thing that you got and get is very involved. And that's something more that I want to talk with you about, uh, because um, as good as that is, you found out, I think, firsthand that that can almost work against you in some ways, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm not saying, you know, I do it because I don't like racing. I absolutely love it and have a, you know, such a big passion for everything I do. But you know, at the same time, when you just go, 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 I mean, you got to have a break, so. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the break and what was almost, I guess, the breaking point for you in 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you had a lot of high expectations, and, and rightfully so, I believe, Devin. And uh, we'll talk about how the 2018 season wiped, uh, I guess, panned out for you and then what you expect to see here in 2019. Stick around. Quad Radio Elite with uh, Devin Feehan continues right after this. Hi, I'm Walker Fowler, and this is a DP brake rotor. And these are DP brake pads. Hmm. <laughs> Larry Mills and DP brakes have been a part of my program for over a decade. Recently, we completed the Heartland Challenge, a 10-hour ATV endurance race that is not only physically demanding, but demanding on my machine and my parts. And that is why we choose DP brake pads. At the end of the race, we had zero brake failures, and they looked brand new. If you aren't using DP brakes, what's stopping you? Literally.
Quad Radio is made possible in part by Root River Racing, supporters of amateur and professional racing on the local, regional, and national levels. And Root River Racing invites you to follow their Facebook page and the D6 Ultimate Quad Series Facebook page where you can keep up to date with one of the nation's premier local championships. JSR Moto Designs is a proud sponsor of Quad Radio. And welcome back to the voice of the ATV Racing Nation, QuadRadio.net, and this Quad Radio Elite. I'm Rodney Tom, along with Devin Feehan, our guest here, as we are uh, pre-racing uh, Georgia, I guess you could say. So uh, a lot of the conversation that we will have will be uh, past that. Heck, when this airs, you may have already won your first GNCC race whenever it's all said and yeah, done, Devin. I sure I mean, hope so. I, I know that that's pretty it, it, pretty exciting to think. And and one thing that's not too far, I don't think, out of the realm of possibility. And whenever we talk about uh, – we were talking there a few moments ago. We were talking about last season and what your expectations was. And I remember last season you came in. Uh, you were a ball of fire. You uh, – a lot of confidence. Um, and, not, and rightfully so because, I mean, you were achieving – a lot of the goals that you set out for yourself early in the season last year. Yeah, you know, I definitely came in, you know, for the rookie season. I knew that, you know, I was just going to kind of be the guy known as the rookie back there. But, you know, to myself, I was, I was telling myself, you know, I could be up there and, um, you know, just came out, just worked as hard as I could in the off season, and, and gave it everything I had all year. I mean, you know, I came up short in a lot of ways. And, I mean, that's what's good about, you know, just throwing yourself up there with those guys. I mean, it really shows you you know, what next level they're at and, you know, how much, you know, how much more work I got to do and, you know, how much smart I got to be about things. So all in all, it was a great year. Did you f find yourself any what, overwhelmed at any point? Like, especially whenever you raced those first couple of XC1 races, did you think that, oh man, I really missed the boat someplace? <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe a little bit. I mean, I just knew that, you know, I was working as hard as I could and I was doing what I can. So I wasn't too hard on myself. I mean, I, I know my position. I know I, I have, you know, time to put in the work and, you know, I just got to keep making strides forward and, you know, keep my focus on where I'm headed. And, and that's really just what keeps me going. Well, take me through last season. Um, started out real strong for you. I mean, obviously, you always want better than what you get. But, I mean, last year actually was started out pretty good for you, huh? Yeah, I just I think I started off the season with a 10th overall. But, uh I just kept, you know, every race after that, I just kept moving forward and forward and forward. And, um, you know, that's when I halfway through the season, I kind of hit a hit a wall and, you know, just was on the downfall from there. So it's something to learn from. So what do you think that wall was? Was that an emotional wall? Was it a physical wall or was it an emotionally physical wall? I mean, what, what how, how was that? I mean, what was that wall exactly? Yeah, I, I definitely think it was a combination of both. I mean, X Factor, I couldn't. I couldn't race that race because I was so sick and I, you know, it was, it was like mono symptoms, but you know, I'm not sure exact. We still don't know really what it was today, but you know, I mean, there is a possibility it could have been from overtraining. I was getting ready to say overtraining and, 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 and that's really odd. You, you would think that, uh, the more you train, the stronger you would get, but there, there happens to be a point where you can start doing more damage and you may have reached that point. It sounds mm -hmm. like. Yeah, I mean, that was always my mindset, you know, coming through the ranks was just, you know, work hard as I possibly can, and I'm just going to get better. But like you said, to a point, uh, it does become too much, and you can't. Is it something you do on your own? Do you have a, a, a trainer, a nutritionist, and all that? Yeah, I was doing it on my own at the time. I mean, um, I had a trainer I was working with one time a week, and, you know, she was always telling me to back off, and I was always just like, I just wanted to go, so... But, you know, this year I have a new trainer. Um, when I'm with Roman Brown, and he's been helping me a lot with, you know, trying not to overdo it and just be smarter about it. And that was one of the first things he said to you, was it not? Yeah. I mean, I just kind of went over what I what I was doing, and he just basically told me that's it's too much. I mean, I'm just doing more damage at that point. Okay, so last year we hit the wall X factor. Uh, obviously we know something's wrong did you change anything up at that particular point or had you not realized it and you just kept pushing i hadn't even realized it and then you know over the summer i started to feel better and um just still was training as hard as i could and then um you know right up to the end of summer break i was actually probably at my best again i felt great and then coming into the last half of the gncc series i kind of died off again so I, I i think again that extra push i didn't need to take was what held me back so how did you approach this this past winter 
Um, you know, like I said, I started working with Roman and we really just went over my program. He's got a really solid training program I'm on now. Um, you know, we're just doing more well-rounded stuff. I'm in just as good of shape as I ever has been. I, you know, I'm just being smarter about it now and, you know, we're still working in some things. It's still new to me. So, you know, I believe in this program and I trust it. So, you know, I'm willing to put in all the work for it. It's not like I'm doing nothing now, you know, I'm still, still training really, really hard and I really want it bad. So it's been good. That's awesome, man. We'll uh, talk a little bit more here with Devin Feehan when Quad Radio Elite continues right after this. Impact Solutions is your factory authorized Elka suspension dealer in the USA. Located in Little Hocking, Ohio, give them a call today for service, parts, warranty, and sales, as well as technical support. 740-989-2026 and be sure and give them a like on Facebook. Impact Solutions. Hi, this is Stephanie from JSR Moto Designs. JSR Moto Design specializes in replacement Nerf bar nets for all makes and models that can be fully customizable to your needs. Our custom apparel can be specifically designed for your race team. We can help make what you wear personal on and off the track, including embroidered or printed hoodies, jackets, t-shirts, hats, jersey lettering, butt patches, and more. Check us out at jsrmotodesigns.com or find us on Facebook and Instagram. And welcome back once again to the voice of the ATV Race and Nation, quadradio.net. I'm Rodney Tomlin. Again, this is Quad Radio Elite. Devin Feehan, uh, we talked about uh, uh, training, we talked about riding, we talked about uh, breaking away from it all, getting away from the not needed of it all with the thing, we talked about overtraining. And the one thing we haven't really talked, we talked about last season. Um, let's talk about this season. Uh, this season we've got a, a lot on the horizon for you. I mean, you had a lot on your plate last year and I I'd say that the one thing that you can take away from your rookie season is you learned a lot. I mean, and there's more than one thing that you can take away. But if you did go back and say the one thing that I think I learned most and it's going to be most beneficial for me heading into 2019 and you focused on that, what what was that? What would that be? Uh, I think the biggest thing I learned from last year was just all the aspects of, you know, my program that I had to to take to the next level and just, you know, really realize where I'm at versus where you know, those top guys are at and just, you know, it kind of gave me more clarity of the steps I need to take to get there. So do you feel far off of where you need to be to be where those guys are? No, I mean, I, I know those guys are definitely next level. I mean, I don't think, I definitely think I'm on the way and I'm, I know I'm just going to keep taking strides and keep moving forward. And, um, I do trust the program and, you know, the people behind me that, you know, I feel like we're really going to, we're going to get there. And, how do you plan on getting there? I mean, do you, is it is it like a I want it in three races plan or is it I think it's going to take a season or two to get to where I want to go? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm coming into all these races even this year with the mindset of, you know, I just want to be that guy that's in that position up front and, uh, you know, battling, battling with those guys. And, you know, I just well, if I keep that going all year and I mean, it's just going to come eventually. And there's no reason to think that you can't do it because that's basically what you did throughout your entire career, right? Yeah, absolutely. I would always just, you know, tell myself I could be up there and just everything would come naturally and it would happen. So how was Florida? Tell me a little bit about Florida. What was that like? Let me see those hands. They're not too bad. They're not bad at all. Look, I show them. I mean, maybe one blister in there. One but. blister. Uh, how do you save the hands like that? I mean, that's your, did you train much down there this year? I rode a little bit in North Carolina a few times, but I didn't get much time in the sand. Uh, but I actually had under gloves this time. They've saved me in the past too. So that's, that worked good. <laughs> those, those do come in handy. That's mm -hmm. for sure. So tell me a little bit about the race. Uh, was, did it go like you expected? Um, I mean, it started off really well. I pulled the whole shot and uh, was actually leading the whole first lap until about the 11 mile marker and Walker was right behind me and he was he was riding really aggressive. So, I mean, it was a totally different experience for me to be in the front of the race. I mean, so that you've got that. I mean, that's something you didn't get last year, right? Absolutely not. I, I think my best start was about a six last year. So, I mean, that pace, what do you think about that pace up front? Because, I mean, once, I mean, Walker, you were running a pace, I'm sure that was like, more than what you were expecting yeah. to 
And those guys are still right there with you. And then when Walker did get around, set it up for me. Tell me how to happen. I want to know how it happened. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I I was out front and Walker was right behind me. I mean, he wasn't giving me any room to breathe. So, um, you know, I I think those other guys were maybe a couple seconds behind. But me, actually, once I made it to the 11, uh, I kind of went around a berm and high-sided it. Uh, Walker was right behind me. Me and him couldn't go anywhere. So all the rest of the guys passed us, and we took off in, I think, eighth and ninth place. So. That was kind of how that played out. And then Walker, I mean, dude, he took off like. He just, I mean, it was like went through all them guys like nothing. I mean. Did you try to latch on to him and try to follow his lines and figure out what he was doing? Well, he was behind me. And then once he, I think he passed me and three other guys in about one line. So I didn't really see him much of the rest of the race. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a blue yeah. blur going yeah. by, wasn't yeah. it? Well, that's pretty impressive stuff on, on Walker's part. There's no doubt. But, uh uh how did you end up that race i ended up ninth i actually after that first lap i like blew myself up and i hadn't i didn't have much left so um you know it's something i worked on this week i think it was maybe something with my diet but um yeah i i've always i've always had energy at the end of the race you know i was surprised to have that happen but you know it is what it is what are you expecting out of georgia what do you hope to get out of here um you know i definitely want to you know get a good start and run up front again um you know, like I said, I think if I want to be there, that's that's just how I got to start. It's 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 much nicer to to start there rather than try and work your way through the pack. So uh, just get a good start, run up front, and uh, you know try and learn from these guys. I mean, Walker, he's he's riding really well. So I mean, he's the guy I want to learn from. Coming up the season, uh, still a long way to go. We're just now looking at round two, of the scheduled 13 race series this year. Uh, obviously, Big Buck uh, postponed till later. That's going to throw. I think the schedule around a little bit uh, when we reschedule that. Um, but looking at the schedule ahead, I mean, there's most of the places that we're going to be going to this year. Uh, I think there might be one or two new uh, facilities on. I mean, it's pretty much cut and dry. You know what to expect. So what do you expect out of this season? What are you hoping out of the next 10, 11 rounds or so? Um, I'm just really hoping to, you know, show everything I've got and, you know, put everything, put, put my best foot forward. You know, I know what I've put in and, you know, like I said, I trust my program a lot and I know we can be running up there. It's just a matter of doing it. So I'm just going to keep coming into these races with that mindset. What was your number coming into this year? Uh, it was 10 from last year. So. 10 from last yep. year. Um, is that where you wanted more than that? You'd hope. Yeah, I definitely wanted more than that. But like I said, I mean, in these learning years, I mean, it's all about just, you just get knocked down, and when you come back, I mean, that's when you come back better. So Okay, that I like that attitude. I mean, you're, you're hungry, no doubt about it. At the end of this season, uh, what is the goal number? Well, I mean, I want to be up there, I mean, at, at the lim minimum, you know, top five, but I really want to be in that number one spot. I mean, <laughs> I like know? that you say that. I mean, because you – some so 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 many times people put themselves that you know they realize that how difficult it would be to win the championship, but they always just say, "If I'm top five, I'll be happy," and they never expect or, right. or want for more. I mean, you expect what you're telling me is you expect to be at least top five. You hope to be champion, mm -hmm. or if you can't be champion, at least top five or better. Is what right. you're saying, right? Yeah, it's like long term, short term goals. I mean, you got to keep your eyes on where you want to be. So. All right. With that, what is the short-term goal? Well, win I, races. Or yeah, as good win as you races. Can. Like I said, it's just the mindset. I just want to, you know, I'm not going to let it get to me if I don't win. You know, I I feel like I'm strong enough to to realize where I'm at, but also know where I'm going. So that's awesome, man. Uh, what's the program like this year? Uh, it's it's been good. We you know made a bunch of changes to the bike. Um, you know, the whole engine package has changed, and you know really did some some good stuff we switched last year with uh micah at custom axis and you know just changed everything on the bike and you know the whole training program with roman's been good so uh yeah i just i just really feel good about it that's great so uh still uh kind of a, a low-key uh operation uh i mean you got a lot of good industry sponsors and stuff like that um working on anything big as far as sponsorship in the future um, nothing too crazy. I mean, I, I think I got a really good team behind me. I mean, not really everybody sees it. It's not, it's not the most flashy, you know, thing in the world, but, um, you know, they believe in me and they believe in the work I put in. And I, you know, I really think that's the biggest thing, you know, when I can, you know, go into Florida, pull a whole shot and end up ninth place. And everyone's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna keep moving towards that, 
where our goals are. I mean, that's just the biggest thing is having a group of people that, you know, believes in everything you got. That's great. Uh, what are you riding this year? What brand? I'm on a Honda. On a Honda. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, I mean, there's so many people that choose the Honda these days, and I, and I don't like to get into this, but why why do you choose the Honda? I mean, the Yamaha's out there. It's readily available. I mean, it's produced and manufactured. You don't have to go through all the extra work to try to find these machines and then build them to be uh, competitive with today's technology. Uh, why the Honda? Why do you choose the Honda? Well, I've always started off as a Honda guy for one, but you know, as of now, it's just what I'm what I'm invested in, and you know, I I know how to work on everything, and it's just uh, where the program's at. But um, I'm just going to run them for as long as I can, I guess. I mean, until somebody comes along and says, yeah. "Hey, here, ride our machine, we'll <laughs> yeah. pay you," right? Yeah, right. Or here, we'll ride our machine, we'll give you everything you need, right? <laughs> we'll see about that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you never know; that can be around the around the corner there for you you obviously got uh, a lot of great things in your favor i think uh, Devin. so uh, uh just keep up uh, the good work uh, any uh, parting shots or anything like that that you might want to pass along to the people let folks know that uh you know what's going on with uh, Devin fee hanford here for 2019 i guess well i don't know you saw it at round one i was out front so i hope that you guys see a lot more of that that's what i want all right. Any uh, anybody want to say thanks to or anything like that? Um, I just have to thank my whole team and everyone behind me. Uh, you know, my family's in behind me 110 um, percent. Just all my sponsors and everybody. Uh, I can't thank you enough. All righty, that sounds good. That's Devin Feehan, and of course, I'm Rodney Tomlin. This is Quad Radio Elite.